Keith McGowan, the Outboard Dad here, here to help you have a better boating experience. 2.5 Mercury rebuild. Please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. Okay, so I zeroed out my dial bore gauge. Now I'm going to go into these two middle cylinders that I took the most off of, and let's see how close we are to this one. Let's see what this one shows. This is the exact size of the piston right here. I don't know if you can see that, but this is right at zero. And those are the two largest holes. We'll look at the rest of them just to see. This one's three thousandths smaller. This one's mm, almost three thousandths smaller. This one is five thousandths smaller. This one's three thousandths smaller. So if we are, if this is the largest cylinder right now, and I am zeroed out right now that should be pretty close to the exact size of that piston so we need to go that three thousandths over when we're when we're finished we want to be somewhere in that three to five thousandths range so really we don't have a lot more material to take off of this we're going to, have to be really careful as we start boring the rest of these and, and honing the rest of these to get to where we want to be then we're going to go to our 200 stones and then our 300 stones to get the finish hone in there so let's do one more test. What I like to do, and it was a machine shop guy that taught me this, always like to double check things. So I'm gonna go ahead, take my new piston. I'm gonna take a cleaner rag. So the rag I've been using here is full of grit and dust and everything. So I wanna keep this as clean as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe these two out and let's see if the piston fits in there. Because if it's the same size as the piston at the skirt, the top of it should start to go in a little bit. And let's see how close we are. So this was the one that measured at zero. Let's see what this looks like. The top of the piston goes in and the skirt is grabbing right now. So now we know our measurements are accurate. My, I know my micrometer is set up accurately to my piston size. Now this one was, let's see. So this one was right at zero. Maybe a hair over. And this one was at just about two thousandths smaller. So this may not fit in here at all. Let's see. Now well, the top goes in but it doesn't, doesn't go as far as the other one, right? So now I know my measurements are accurate. It's a double check. Let's see, these were even smaller. Again, the top goes in, but that's it. So we're really close to where we need to be. Doesn't even go in the top there very much, nor that one. So now we know we're pretty close to where we need to be with our measuring, and now we can start honing to get closer to that piston size. So now that we've double checked our piston sizes, I'm gonna go ahead and do some more boring to get us a little closer. I don't wanna get closer to maybe two thousandths over my size of my piston. So then I'm gonna hone the rest of the way. So I still have some deep scratches in there, but my 200 and my 300 are gonna give, give me the rest of the way down. I'm also gonna use my modified stones, so I'll get a little video of using the modified stones to make sure we're getting down in the bottom of the cylinder all the way. We're continuing on with our machining process by hand using a Sun and an AN11 hone. And we're boring, we're getting closer to our size, we're getting closer to that piston wall clearance each time we bore a little more. So if you remember, we went in with the thousand grit stones. And if you look closely at the stone, you can see the bottom of the stone takes a little more wear and actually gets a little chunk out of it there because it's down in those lower ports where it takes a little more abuse. So flip the stones over, run the drill in reverse just lightly. So I get more of the bottom of the cylinder honed out. So now we're right where we're about one to two thousandths piston wall clearance. So we're at the point where we need to make sure we, we get this straight before we start finish honing. So what you're gonna see the difference here is if you look at this, Put my gloves on, it's pretty nasty. So this is a standard 100 grit stone, and this is one that I modified. 
So if you look, I put a piece of wood on here. It's actually teak wood. It's just hard wood, kind of like my head. Um, so I put that on there. So now I can just work the bottom of that cylinder without working the top of the cylinder at all. So I have these stones modified. This is what an old timer taught me. You can see I JB welded those in there and also modified the, so there's two, two stones that are modified, modified that way. And I actually save the extra bits, right? So that I can continually make more of these and a little block of wood that I have in there so I can continue to make more of these each time I bore and hone. And if you look, the wipers also I've modified so that I have a nice even wear. So what I did when I, when I make these stones and these um, particular setups is I glue everything together with the epoxy and then I have an old block that I work in, in and out to make sure they're shaped and round. And then I, I'm only doing the bottom of the cylinder. So that's what we're gonna work today. We're gonna get down in the bottom of the cylinder with these modified stones, and then we're gonna measure and get close to where we need to be with our piston wall clearance. Always wear a mask. You don't wanna breathe in the grinding dust. So now let's go ahead and measure and see how much we got out of the bottom. We'll see the difference of what it is from the top. So the top on this one, we are just about a half a thousandth. Uh, that's a half a thousand smaller than the piston size. We haven't gone too far with this one yet. Now we were two and a half thousandths smaller inside. So let's see where we are now. And it is very tricky to get the dowel bore gauge in there the right way. So this is just about a thousandths now. So we're about a half a thousandths difference. If you saw, I really just took a little bit of time, just taking a little bit of material at a time off. Let's check the next one. So we are, this one's already one thousandths over the piston size. So we're getting closer. And the bottom is exactly one thousandths over. So this is perfectly straight right now. So I wanna go a little bit further than perfectly straight. Let's check the last one. This is right at zero and we are right at zero. So these two cylinders are straight right now. So what I wanna do is I wanna go the bottom a little bit larger. I'm gonna wait until I get that final word from the manufacturer of the pistons on that three to five piston wall clearance, or are they telling me two to three? And then also talk to them, a machine shop guy and get another opinion. I like to get a multitude of counselors uh, that I trust, that I've built motors like this before. So most of my Mercury engines I've done, I've been right at five thousandths, haven't had a problem. Most of the Johnson Evinrude or Yamahas, depending on the piston that I use, if I'm using the forged pistons, I'm gonna be around seven, eight thousandths, right? So these are different pistons. They have a 18% silica in them, so they're not gonna expand as much, so we can get it a little tighter. What I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna go ahead and get the bottom of the cylinder almost exactly to the size I want it to be. Then I'm gonna bring the top in with my hones to meet the bottom. 
So this way, when I finish hone, I'm finish honing the whole thing straight. So that's the process we're going to continue on with today. Please like, subscribe, send me any comments. And boring can be boring, so I'm not going to make you watch all of the boring that I'm going to do with this. Now we're going to get to that point where we're getting close. We're going to make sure we guarantee that we have the right sizes that we're looking for. And then we're going to go one cylinder at a time. I'm not going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, because I don't, I don't want to be off. I'm just going to focus on one, do the finish hone, do everything. Once we get within that thousands to thousands and a half of the piston wall clearance that we're looking for. And then we're going to go in with our 200 and then our 300, and that'll bring us out to where we need to be. Then we'll go ahead and ball hone. Then we'll go ahead and clean up and do the next three cylinders. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. It's Keith McGowan, the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. And don't forget, electronic copy, $20 value for free of my used outboard motor buying guide. All the tests you see me go through to help you have a better boating experience by buying a better motor by going through the checks that you need to check out. Have a great day.